There you are. I've been waiting for you. You must have put in some work if you're over here in week four. Module four? Do you understand what you're stepping into right now? Do you have any idea what we're about to talk about? I know you probably saw it, but what does it mean? Back to the future? Yeah, we're not talking about the movie. Eh, kind of. We are going to talk about some of the most intense things that you could possibly imagine. I can imagine you getting a little emotional. I can imagine you getting a little excited. Because here's the thing. Everything that has ever happened to us in the past has led to you and I hanging out right this very second. So what does that mean? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Is it just a perspective? What's the point? If everything that's ever happened has led us to this exact moment, that that must mean that this was meant to be, yes? You're supposed to be here. And with that said, let's just talk about it. If you were meant to be here because of everything that happened in your past, then that means that everything that happened in your past was meant to happen exactly the way it did. What? Yep. Every decision, every thought, everything that's ever happened to you, everything you've survived, everything you've ignored, everything has led you to this exact moment in the exact same way that it led you to every single other moment prior. Had those exact moments not happened, you wouldn't be the person that you are right this second, and we wouldn't be hanging out. I'll drink to that. Think about that for one second. For one second. You go, know, had it not gone exactly the way it did, this wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. We're drinking. Right? Cheers. Goodness gracious. So now that we understand how <laughs> exciting our past actually is, I want to welcome you officially to the Beyond Sober Six Step Recovery Program. We're only on steps four. We're in step four, back to the future. This is what we're going to cover. In all, acceptance. You've already accepted everything. You understand that life is habitual. You've already started developing healthy habits. And now we're going back in time. Now, this is the only time that I'm going to say, let's go back in time. Because the majority of the rest of your life is going to be spent in the present and the future. You're going to rewrite your past by focusing on the now. This brings up the concept, the very, very, very important concept and actuality that you're doing one of these two things at all times. You're either winning or you're learning. What happened in your past is meant to be learned from. If you're learning from it, you are winning. If you're not winning, you are learning. There's no other ifs, ands, or buts about it. How we process what happened in the past determines whether or not we learned or we feel like a winner. So let's talk about this. Winning versus learning. We're either winning or learning. There's no such thing as failure. Things may not be working out perfectly, but you are learning what doesn't work. Know what doesn't work. Knowing what doesn't work is equally as important to the feeling of winning. Think about this. When you know what you like, you know what you don't like, you know what doesn't work, you know that yelling at him doesn't work, you know that them yelling at you doesn't work, that's perfect. Because you are winning in that moment. You're literally having an experience that's guiding your behavior for the rest of your life. You know. You're learning right now. You're learning your strengths. You're learning your weaknesses. You're learning exactly what drives you. You're learning exactly what motivates you, what exactly you want to be surrounded by. It doesn't matter how they respond. You can now accept the fact that that's how they choose to practice their response in the same way that you choose to continue moving forward, in the same way that you've learned just enough about you to know that you want to work on becoming superhuman. You've practiced accepting the fact that they may feel like they're winning, but they probably aren't. But you are. That's because you're in a place of curiosity. You're learning. You want to learn. You want to know. If you're here, you're studying yourself. That's winning. If you're here, you're investing in yourself. That's winning. If you look into your past and you go, that was horrible, good. That's learning. When we do things, we get results for us to study. I didn't know that I could lift that thing until I did it. 
you don't know what you can't achieve before you don't achieve it. We can't, you can, but you don't just assume you're not going to be strong. You don't just assume these things. You don't base your life on assumptions. You do stuff and then you figure it out. Then you go, oh, I thought I was stronger than I was. I thought I was going to be able to handle that better, but obviously I can't. Awesome. You've practiced acceptance. That's what we did in module one. You could accept the fact that that's not your super strength yet, but because you're a curious person that's actively learning or winning, you know how to take that information and actually do something amazing with it, which is what you're doing right now. These are absolute facts. These are just the basic fundamental elements of understanding. The more you know what doesn't work, the more you know what you don't like, you, the more you know where you want to put your energy. And when you put your energy in the right areas, you will feel like the winner you actually are. Curiosity positions you to look at information objectively, asking yourself what makes that happen or what's motivating them to say that. Helps remove the emotion and not react. You're programming yourself to respond. So many people practice reaction. Boom! Ooh. So a reaction. Something happens. They're not even positioning themselves to practice just taking a step back. Whoa, buddy, hold your horses. Most people, most of us, we were not trained to keep calm, cool, collected. We hear those words and we go, that doesn't necessarily apply to us because I just reacted. There are so many things. Even at this four years later, okay, four years after liver failure, I still see DTs and bugs and things and all this stuff. I'm not hallucinating necessarily, but my brain is programmed in such a way to where I see it, I know that it's not real. So I choose to respond with nothing. I recognize it, I don't react. I see it and I feel it, I know it instantly. The reason why so much information seems like impossible is because it seems like you have to study, 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 do all these different things and practice for an entire lifetime before you get good at ignoring things that don't matter. Wrong. We talked about this in the last module. We talked about this, you think that you have to suffer for a certain amount of time before you understand it, before you've been punished enough. It doesn't work like that. Putting yourself in a curious position. Why would they, don't he, remember this, when you ask somebody why, you're asking them to get defensive. You're asking them to defend themselves. Why'd you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you ever consider doing that? Why did you do this to me? Why didn't you do this? Why would you do that? You're asking someone to literally dive into their core and figure out what's applicable, if you even deserve the respect that you probably do, if they feel that, then they might give you a solid explanation, but the chances of them actually saying why they did that is going to be from a place of defensiveness. This is why asking alcoholics why they did this, why they did this stuff, they're, they, now they're in a place to explain themselves and they don't like that feeling. Most of us don't like feeling uncomfortable, so we do things to stay out of the uncomfortability, right? But putting yourself in a place of curiosity, what motivated Cody to make this program? What's motivating me to stay here? Why am I so interested in learning? Ooh. What's motivating them to actually give me their time? What is the reason behind their disconnect? It's not about asking why, but it is putting yourself in a place of curiosity. When you're curious, once again, this goes back to learning. When you're curious about something, I wonder what this water is made of. I wonder if this is better than that. I wonder if I'm capable of learning. I wonder if I'm capable of adopting a new lifestyle. I wonder if I'm capable of these things. I wonder if this will make sense for me. Just getting involved with the information is putting you in a place of reception. I wonder if. It'd be cool if. I'd like it if, right? So looking at this information, it's just juice. You don't have to have an emotion associated with what you're curious about. The emotion happens before you take action on your curiosity. I didn't like that. I wonder why. I do like that. I wonder why I like that. I wonder what's so interesting, what's so motivating for me to do these things. You're putting yourself in a place to remove your emotions and literally just look at the data as data. This is where so much of our past is our programming. Because of that reaction, the neurological code that you've created has been whoosh, get angry, get violent, get upset, drink alcohol, drink this, do this, say this, 
That's your response. When you're learning and you know you're learning, you're going, wait, what is this teaching me? Wait, hold up. What is this information really? At its core, what is it? This is why at your core, you're amazing. And you know this. You 100% know this. And when you get curious, then you start to unlock those elements that have been hiding you from yourself. That's why you're here, because you're curious, because you're looking at the information objectively going, I have felt the pain, I've seen the drama, I've accepted this information, now I'm ready to learn, now I'm ready to grow, now I'm ready to not let go of my past, but accept it. Now that you've accepted your past, or accepting your past, you're in this position of control. Once you know how powerful you are and what that control is like, you're able to use what you learn here and for the rest of your life to shift your future, to shift the way you take in new information, just simply by getting curious. You're not supposed to know the answer. You're not supposed to seek the answer. It's the point of just being curious. I put myself in this position and go, interesting, that's interesting. I like that. Interesting. Tell me more. Right? Hmm. When we ask people who have been treating us a certain way or friends or, or whatever, dude, what, what makes you think that that's okay? Right? And instead of attacking them, we're actually getting curious, dude. I'm really curious why you continue saying that to me. What's the point of that? First off, you're practicing a healthy boundary, letting people know that you've learned enough about yourself to know that that's not cool. And that doesn't make you feel uh, feel good. <laughs> if it doesn't make you happy, if it doesn't make you feel successful, if it's not making you money, then why are we surrounding ourselves with that? A healthy boundary is saying, hey, I accept you, but I will not accept this from you, right? When you do that, you can continue relationships, you can continue learning about yourself, you can continue building a healthy relationship with not just yourself, but the people you choose to surround yourself with. The overall point is, most of our relationships are kind of circumstantial. It's family, it's friends, school, work, all those things. But then, aside from that, you've got to think of, that's your conditioning. Those are the people that you, you've got to be around. But then you look at, what type of people do I want to be around? I've learned. I'm curious. I'm a curious person. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. If you are, you're in the wrong room. We talked about this. You want to continue surrounding yourself with people that are going to move you forward. People like me. I'm not the answer, you're the answer. I'm just one of many, many, many human beings who have studied themselves and share their findings with amazing people just like you. So you're able to seek more information because you are curious. Not all information that you need to know or want to know is going to be presented to you when you need to know it. But if you're curious and you stay curious and you look at information as just information, then when that information actually does show up, guess who's gonna be prepared? you <laughs> that's right right that's superhuman stuff right there check this out <laughs> all events were meant for you to learn from if it crosses your path it's for you it's not yours and it's simply meant for you to study who what when where how why or ignore I'm gonna say this again if it crosses your path it was meant for you but you don't own it if you see a bird, that bird was meant for you to see. If you look at this as going, life is throwing all these things in my direction. Okay, cool. People who are practicing the, the act of winning or learning are going, that bird was meant to show me that I get distracted easily. Because you know that, <laughs> because you learn that from that bird getting your attention, you know that if you put yourself in a situation where there are many birds, <laughs> that you're going to lose your attention. Like, you're going to give your attention to all of the wrong areas. And because of that, that's going to take away from the experience. You're learning. You see a car crash. Boom. Dang. You learn you're, you're more empathetic than you thought. Right? If we're drinking alcohol, we're going to look at that car accident and go, damn, drink one for the homies. Dang. You process like that. You numb it away. Felt the feeling, get rid of it. I don't want to feel the feeling, get rid of it. This is why when we practice giving our bodies alcohol, we're not actually processing the information in a way that's, help us, that's going to help us never have to feel that again. You only have to feel it once. And if you feel it twice, that's something that you believe is important to feel. 
I choose to be empathetic. I feel empathetic. These events, these situations, these things that happened in the past. I've watched my mother get hit. I've watched her be kept on pills. I watched my father do these things. I've watched those people do those things. I've watched the fear in someone's eyes as they beat me up. I've seen these things. All of that was meant to cross my path. Depending on what type of person you are, you go, oh, it was destiny for me to get hurt. It was destiny. God did this. The universe did this. It doesn't matter where it comes from. We don't need to know why it crossed our paths. We figured that out in time. We just have to accept the fact that it did. Our emotions of what happened in the past and what happens right now don't change what happened. Even in the moment, you have to think about this. If in the moment, someone can hit you in the face and you feel no emotions, you don't give that person your emotions, then that's the end of it. If not having an emotion then isn't going to change anything, and not having an emotion now isn't going to change anything about what happened in the past, then we've got to really look at this from a place of control and go, you're right. I don't have to give my emotions to the thing. I've probably just practiced re reacting with that response, with that emotion. I thought it was a good idea at the time. I thought it made sense. It felt right, 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 right. But it only felt right based on your environment. It only felt right because of your, your conditioning. It only felt right because they said so, because you saw that. Programming. You've been programmed either on purpose, you've either programmed yourself like you're doing right now, like to drink water, which we're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Drink water, I'm going to go all the way around. Or you've been conditioned through your circumstances. I personally was conditioned to be paranoid. Ooh, I have to look over my shoulder. Every time I look over my shoulder, there's somebody to worry about. I always was living on the edge. I was programmed to worry about footprints, footsteps, car engines, big trucks, all of these things, raising of voices, car doors slamming, dishes being broken, all of these things. These are the repercussions of the environment that I was in. I didn't ask for that stuff. But I also, looking back, don't have to go, mm, you're a bad person. You deserve that. You asked for that. We didn't even ask to be born. Yet we're given all these emotions to process something we didn't even ask for. We're here. And yet we're given all of this information. And then, <laughs> then we've been told that we can process this incredibly exciting universe that literally only exists inside our own minds with a numbing agent. What? No healthy person is going to do that. And if you're unhealthy, it's probably not your own fault. You're not sitting here going, I want to be unhealthy. That sounds good. I like the concept of being unhealthy. Doing unhealthy stuff is exciting. When, when we all started drinking, when we all started doing these bad habits, it was, it was exciting to start with. And then it just became a part of who we are. And then we just found reasons why it was okay. And then we got good at finding reasons. We became the best. You became the best at finding reasons to feel the way you felt. That became your auto response. You look at them and go, oh, God. And then you see one thing similar and you go, oh, God. And then you feel that feeling, and then what comes afterwards? It's a series of events. It's a series. Look, I didn't sit here and practice. I did not tell my body to do all these things at the same time. I just knew that to get to this position, I have to trigger my body to do these things. I'm not even thinking about it. They're all firing at the same time. That's an auto response, chunking data. Our environment has chunked the data in such a way that our auto response is to get close or to expand or whatever it is. We have been conditioned through no fault of our own to be the person that developed the unhealthy habit. There are some people out there that will say, just stop, just don't do that. It's not that simple. <laughs> That's when that term is actually applied. It's not that simple. You've practiced that behavior your entire life. You've practiced living in a realm that is not true. Your whole world is different if you just stop doing that. That's why it's a process. The steps are simple. The process is elongated. It takes time. 
time isn't as simple as it might seem, depending on who you are. The point with this is every single thing that's ever happened to you has put you in a position to learn from it. Certain situations gave you the feeling of winning. Hell yeah. As a matter of fact, you've survived every single thing that's ever happened to you ever. You are constantly winning. If you're still alive and still making magic and still doing anything, you're, you're not out there hurting people. You're winning. You're the role model. You're killing it. Now that we know that we're winning, what are we going to do? We're going to keep learning. Because eventually, we're going to put ourselves in a space where we don't have to focus so hard to learn. We just get it. We chunk that data. It just makes absolute sense. The person that you become without the agent, the alcohol, the substance, the toxicity, is the superhuman with a personality. <laughs> learning is winning. It's far more important that we're learning. If we're continuously winning, then we're just practicing what we're good at. No new information. The first win is the repercussion of all of the learning prior. Do you understand what I just said? There's nothing more important. Just because you won, that doesn't mean a single thing. It doesn't mean anything. People win things all the time. You spend more time in the journey to the win than you spend in the win. We talked about this last week. Where you're going, I got the thing now, and that's it. It's over with. It's done. You got the money now, and you're still you. You got the, you, you got the certificate, and, and, if you didn't learn, <laughs> then all you were doing is practicing what you knew to the point of a reward. We are not here to get rewards or feel like someone is rewarding us. We are here to reward ourselves with happiness, with joy, with abundance, with connection and communication and empathy. All of the things that we want is what we reward ourselves with, starting with water. <laughs> We're drinking. You're constantly winning. You are. It might take time for you to see that, but the point is not to see it, just to accept it. You're winning. You're here. You're winning. Are you not? You don't have to feel like a winner, but the fact is, is that you're winning. Did you even know? Is it a race? What's at the end of this? A better you. You can't get to the end of it without going through the journey. You're winning. You are at the front of the race you're always in. A race to nowhere. A race to inside. A race to you. You're not even racing the old you. You are just moving forward at your own pace. It's your world. It's your universe. You can't get, the faster you get to whatever destination you, you choose, the less time you spend learning. This is why cheating doesn't work. This is why you could cheat your way. To, I've done this numerous times, hundreds of thousands of dollars, all this stuff, lost it, lost a nice car, lost a nice job, lost the, the best relationships, all of that stuff, lost it because I cheated my way to get there. I wanted it now. I didn't go through the process. You are viewing me four years of practice. Every single word that falls out of my face is me continuing to practice and learn. I'm constantly feeling like a winner. It doesn't matter. I know somebody somewhere is getting results. I know that other people are better people because I'm alive. That makes me feel like a winner. And I don't have to chalk it up to the fact that I'm not dead yet to feel like I won something. I'm winning at every breath. Every single time I think about somebody else, I'm winning. Every single time I'm putting time in on myself, I'm learning. Winning, learning is winning. Winning is learning. You're a winner. You're winning. It's not a situation where if you're not first, you're last. Tell you what, you ain't first, you're last. That's not truth. That's a subtle manipulation to get you to think that working harder is going to change anything. It's not. You work smarter. You work more intricately. You put more time in. That's all it is. Fall in love with the process. That's what you're doing. Is you're loving the process to the new you. You're already the new you. You're four weeks in. 
You were a different person last week. This week, it's a whole new version of you. What are you talking about? Just because someone else didn't see it doesn't mean it's an absolute fact. Just because some dude or she didn't go like, is this a new version of you? Well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I don't have to explain anything to you, but if you see it, then it must be, right? Whether you choose to believe me or not, I choose to believe that I'm a new version of me. Because that's a healthy thought. Because you know you're winning. It's okay to call yourself a winner. Look in the mirror. You're winning, bro. You're winning, girl. I'll tell you what, you're winning. You're a winner. You're winning. The more you think thoughts like that, the more you find reasons why they're true. This is why healthy, habitual thinking is so powerful. Objective thinking overrides emotions and allows you to process effectively. What if there are no emotions applied? Is it just a word, an accident, an opinion? I think all things are simply information and a response is it mandatory. As you learn, as you grow, where you are right now, you know this, not because I told you, but because you know this, you don't have to apply an emotion. But what if it just comes in and rushes in over every, it, it, I didn't ask for that. Good, stop moving. <gasps> Anxiety, wait. It'll pass. It'll pass. You may have had that response. You may That may have been your reaction, having that emotion. But what you're practicing is not acting on that emotion. That emotion is going to disappear. If you practice pushing that emotion away, and I don't mean burying it with alcohol. I mean pushing it away, recognizing that it's there. I feel it. I feel it. Oh, I'm pissed. It's not about the emotion. The emotion's okay. Emotions don't hurt. They might feel bad, <laughs> depending on the emotion. But the point is, is to recognize the emotion and then go, oh, that's right. I don't have to do that. Mm, got it. I know what happens at the end of that road. I get explosive. Every time I look at that thing, I feel this thing, right? That's fine. Because that emotion isn't your action. If you're not acting on your emotion, then it stays dormant in your body stays dormant in your mind. It'll just sit there. <laughs> it doesn't have to go anywhere. And so what happens when we look at things just objectively, it's just the hat, it's just the thing, it's just whatever, and we don't have an emotional reaction. Reaction. When we allow our emotion to just be an emotion, sitting pretty, then we can control what we do. That's seven seconds of just sitting here and then going. That's right. I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to let it go. <laughs> it's just an accident. It's just water. It's just water. This is all over my clothes right now. I'm wet. My emotion about being wet doesn't change the fact that I'm wet. And if I choose to give all of my attention to the fact that I just poured water on myself, then I'm disconnecting from what's important, you. I don't have to be upset. Yeah, I might have done it. I did it myself. Yeah, I could have prepared for that, right? I didn't plan on doing that. That was just an example. The kids could come in here with squirt guns, and then I can go, oh, oh, oh! My first thought is, don't ruin the computer. <laughs> don't ruin the machine. But the experience itself, it's still funny. <laughs> it's still fun. The kids thought of me. You see how I'm responding right now? I'm just pretending that that happened. My brain doesn't know the difference between, I'm, if they walk in, if I imagine them walking in right now, it's exactly the same as if they did. This is mental rehearsal. This is why so many of us practice unhealthy rehearsals. What if it doesn't work? What if he comes in with a gun? What if he comes in and does this? What if they do this? What if you think all this nasty crap and then have an emotional response because our brains are idiots and then we create anxiety for ourselves, and then get upset that we have anxiety and then that messes with everything we do. Your brain's an idiot. This is why when your brain decides to activate, doesn't it make sense to start programming it with healthy thoughts like drinking water? I practice those responses. I practice activating my learning center and going, 
Yes, I don't like being surprised, but I do love the fact that the kids did that. I do love the feeling of water. I do. I don't like the mess. My feelings about the mess don't change the mess. So I might as well enjoy the experience while it's here. Because if I'm pissed that everything's wet, is it less wet? No. <laughs> if the computer's ruined, it's ruined. If, it, if something happens, it happens. I don't have to get pissed. So many of us have been programmed to go, it's ruined. It's the end of everything. It's the biggest mess that's ever been made. I can't believe the kids. Who? Why would they? Huh? Huh? The kids are being kids. That dude's being an alcoholic. That dude's being who they are. You're upset with who they are. You're choosing to stay with them. You're choosing to continue that. You're banking your emotions on their potential. And you know probably how they're going to react and how they're going to do this stuff, yet you choose to stay here. And, and then most of us are programmed to find the reasons why they are the problem, even though you're directly contributing to it by not removing yourself from the situation. They don't need you. You don't need them. You need you. You got to take care of you. The better version of you that you are, the more you can support that person that obviously needs your help. But you got to take care of you first. That's why you're here. We've practiced punishing ourselves, thinking that that is actually self-love. You've got to feel the pain. You've got to be hurt. You've got to be upset. You have to get pissed. That's not the truth at all. And I'll drink to that.